Welcome to the first episode of a series I like to call Fourth Seat Cinema. Yeah. Uh, I'm here, Jack Anderson. I'm here, I'm Zellrog. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here. Yes, you are. So, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. What's, what's going on? So, I don't know if we ever discussed this on stream, but um, your relationship with movies is kind of weird to most people. To me, especially. Yeah, I'm not usually a fan of most movies. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Go on. Yeah. I, I I showed you stuff like Mad Max and John Wick, which were decent movies, to, to critically and commercially, but you just didn't like. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hate them. I just wasn't particularly impressed. You're, well, which is kind of the worst of the three options between liking something or hating something, because that means that you'll just forget about it. Yeah. So I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you some uh, American classic movies. Yeah. Like, movies that are considered really, really good. Some hallmarks. Yes, yeah, some, of the, some of the highlights in American cinema. And okay. Episode one, we just watched uh, Fargo. Don't you know. Don't you know. <laughs> yeah. Fargo, for those of you who don't know, directed by the Coen brothers. I am familiar with them. I have seen uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? That's my limit of my experience with the Coen brothers. What did you think of it? Uh, better than Fargo. Really? Yeah, I like right. that one better. I, but then again, I'm big on like uh, I'm I'm big on mythology, so anything uh, that's playing off the Odyssey is gonna. All right, that 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 makes sense. So Fargo plus it, it had John Goodman being an asshole. In it. <laughs> We're getting distracted. Okay, Go so on. Fargo was uh, was released in 1993. It shows What's a lot of crowd picks. Yeah, ni- no, sorry, not 96. 96. Yeah, three years off. Um, but yeah, middle of the 90s, Clinton was in office. Uh. TVs were still uh, on the CRT standard. Yeah. And uh, no cell phones. No, there were no no cell phones. Yeah. So well, no good cell phones. Were there, there were no cell phones in the movie. I didn't see any fucking I'm cell I'm sure they didn't have them in the movies, but they, they had those, like, big cell phones oh, back yeah. then, didn't they? Yeah, people thought they weren't going to catch on. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, we're playing Pokemon on Because they <laughs> microwaved your brain. <laughs> I mean, were they wrong? <laughs> yes. The, um, so, go on. So, oh man, we'll start. I guess we'll start with the opening. Uh, it has a really nice score. I like the score. I don't know what you thought of the score. Uh, it was okay. I didn't notice a lot of the music other than the main theme. That, but you know, it, it was an okay theme. It sounded yeah. very Celtic at first, but as it went on and reached the climax, it started to sound like a Western film theme. Yeah. It was very non-specific uh, music. I guess, yeah. It's kinda, it was definitely a depressing theme, and it they used it to effect. It's, it set the tone for the movie. So, movie begins, where we open with uh, William Macy's c- character, uh, Lundergaard. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he meets up with... Uh, with whom you dub Shitty Tron Travolta. Oh, we'll we'll, get, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we should explain that when they're in the car, because that'll right. make the most okay. sense. But the first thing when I saw... What is it, Lundergaard? Is that his name? Yeah, William a- Macy. He's the yeah. Okay, the first thing I said was that he looked like uh, he looked like an American Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. that first scene, that's what that was my thoughts. Yeah, like, it, it was the hair. It was the hair. It, it, his, it was his face too. He had he has kind of the facial structure of I, Ramsay. I'll do a side by side comparison. Just compare Ramsay to uh, William a- Macy. I later up I later later modified my opinion of him. I thought he looked more like uh, the, what was his name? William Defoe from Spider. William Defoe, yeah. And Osborne. Somebody took the DNA of Willem Dafoe and the DNA of Gordon Ramsay and combined. It's my love baby. Yes. <laughs> so he's meeting with two criminals. Yes, he uh, is. In a restaurant in I've, the town of Fargo. Yes. And that's the only time Fargo appears in or a, Fargo. Or a bar, I guess. <laughs> it's a bar. That, I, the, I saw the bar and I thought, can confirm this is what dive bars look like in the Northwest. Which is amazing because they're in Minnesota. Which is, I, I, I would still call that... If you split the United States into four quarters, Minnesota is in the Northwest. I guess we can we can annex Minnesota. They, they get appreciated. I think it's next to. I, I think it's the one next to Idaho. If there's one place that should legalize weed, it would be Minnesota because they need it more. Or maybe the Dakotas are next to Idaho, and then further is Minnesota. I don't know. I, don't, I know it's the top of Mimal. That's Minnesota. I guess it, it's basically American Canada. Eh. Eh. Yeah. Don't you know? They only say that once. They did good Minnesotan accents in the movie. Very we, good. We were waiting for the very end, until the very end for the don't you know. They only gave us one. <laughs> Just the one, but it was I, worth I, it. I, I predicted that. I, like halfway through the movie, I said, they're only going to drop one don't you know. They're holding out on us. Yeah, they don't want to... So he... So 
Lundegaard has quite possibly the worst criminal plan in existence. He's, he's essentially a, yeah. hired two people to kidnap his wife and then tells him he's doing it for only 80000 but he's really asking for $1 million, and then he's going to take the remainder and use it to pay off these vague debts? Yeah, it never really is established what kind of shit he's in financially, just that he's looking for money everywhere he can he yeah, can possibly like get it. Yeah, he's like scamming people from his dealership. He's, he's like trying to... Ask for loans for... He, he, Somewhere down the line, he fucked up financially. <laughs> he's continually fucking up financially. Oh, yeah, he is. And he even gets to a point where he's telling the criminals his scheme, and the criminals are like, you're a fucking idiot. We're in. <laughs> yeah, but, but, they're, but they're like... He, 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 fucking uh, J- J- Steve Buscemi's character. Uh, Who's Steve, who? Steve Buscemi, the, the funny-looking dude. The guy oh, who, right, the uncircumcised guy. The... <laughs> he was funny looking, and he was also uncircumcised. <laughs> was he funny looking in any other way? No, just funny looking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we going. going yeah. To fight Frieza, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Don't you know? Yeah, the other guy's Peter Stromer, who I like because he was uh, he was Berlin. And, oh, the uh, other Black criminal. List. Yeah. He, got, of course, he'd be Berlin. He looks like Germany from Italia. <laughs> You're not wrong. I don't. I think he's actually Swedish or something. I could buy it. Um, them wacky Swedes. So he was a pretty wacky character, wasn't he? Yeah, so he hired. Yeah, he, he hires these two criminals for the price of eighty thousand or forty thousand dollars and a car to kidnap his wife to get money. more money, and then and then hope that it all works out. Spoiler alert: it doesn't. And then it, after after the hiring. It goes back to his home life, and he's talking to his rich father-in-law. His rich father, he, he is a son, he's married. He's an entrepreneur. The father-in-law is like a business owner. He's, just, he's actually he's pretty reasonable for being a business owner. He didn't do anything outright villainous the entire movie. He now, was just... Yeah. Now, I don't. I didn't mention this because I knew you didn't know who he was. I thought he looked like Miles Mayhem, who was uh, the bad guy from the Mask the series. I, I don't remember what it was. It was Cartoon? I sure. think it was a cartoon. Yeah, they had a mass cartoon. I didn't watch any of it, so I don't da, know what you're talking da, about. Da, da. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was weird. Yeah, it was. Okay, so the guy's got a family. He's got a wife and kid, and the... And they're actually pretty nice to him. Yeah. He's the he's the worst one out of the bunch, which is weird because he's played by by William H. Macy. He acts nice, but it, it's a pretty bullshit act. Yeah. He, he's yeah. a terrible liar. Yeah. And, uh, so and his wife's... His wife's pretty uh, a pretty normal wife his yeah. kid is pretty obsessed with the accordion <laughs> but otherwise yeah. he's pretty he's pretty uh, non nondescript the kid i almost want to say the kid was one of the most developed characters i was <laughs> i was interested in this teenager who plays the accordion and has white snake on his back oh wall. yeah that's the old slide it in <laughs> i don't think it was that album i don't i doubt it everybody i don't know how many people were listening to white snake in the 90s but i saw that poster and i'm like yeah yeah, I pointed out the poster to you. This movie acts as a really good period piece. Yeah. Yeah, 90s! <laughs> no, no Segas. I, no. I, actually, no, this, that was the NES era, if anything. Yeah. 96, that was totally... NES amazing. was 85. I know, mean, okay, yeah, SNES, so yeah, Sonic was yeah, a Yeah, 90s game. was Genesis. I'm surprised he wasn't playing video games. He lives in fucking Minnesota. There's nothing else to do but play video games and freeze to death. Yeah. Uh, okay. Kind of like Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the, the the rich father in law is in the living room, and the the guy manages to talk the father in law. Well, he talks about a business, a, a property deal. He's like, you, "I want to build a parking lot." Yeah, it'll make a bunch of money. Like, <laughs> a parking lot, and where are they? They're living in Minneapolis, so that's a that's metropolitan. Yeah, area. they're talking about a parking lot, and then the next scene is the two criminals driving in driving a car. down like it's a shittier Pulp Fiction. Driving down just a big blank white nothing. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we need to build parking lots. There's nowhere to park in this state. <laughs> God damn. So, and he's trying. Steve Buscemi's trying to make convert. He's like talking about. About uh, about some getting laid and the, and me, meanwhile the other dude shittier John Travolta is like it's like I want pancakes, 
We eat pancakes the entire trip. He's like, I want pancakes. Eat bre- eat pancakes are breakfast food. Yeah, we can't. Got, I gotta go get like a, a steak or something. Not pancakes though. <laughs> and he just looks at him with. He's he's so offended. <laughs> he's hurt. In that one moment, he's just looking at him, going, "You serious, bro? I thought I knew you. Do you go to an IHOP? You could let me have my pancakes. You could have something else." Is that also when he's talking about like the? Oh, getting late. No, no, the second one, the second scene. The second scene talking. where they're driving, they're actually in Minneapolis, and he's like, you don't fucking talk at all. Fuck you. And you get, like, crack a window or something. Crack a window, stop smoking in this car, stop sticking up this car, and talk to me. Yeah. And that's why, that's why I said, is that they looked like, that's where it came from, is that the guy, Steve Buscemi's character... Wears dark sunglasses, and he he's always he's always like talking this shit. He's a va- foul mouth. He's got a little tweedly mustache. He's like a a shitty white guy trying to act like Jules. Yeah. So he's shitty Jules, and the other guy was a a big buff blonde guy with slick back hair. He was shitty John Travolta. Did this movie come out before or after Pulp Fiction? I don't know when Pulp Fiction All came right. out. Uh, I'll I'll double check that. But yeah, they're they're basically on their way to do the whole kidnapping thing. Yeah. And. Uh, and what what's his name can't get a hold of them. Lundergaard. Well, because because Lundergaard realizes, hey, this this deal might pan out. I might not need them. So he talks to uh, Chet Proudfoot. Oh no, yeah, his father in law actually thinks it over and agrees to the investment. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. And he's like, okay, I gotta cancel this. I, I'm actually gonna get the money. <laughs> he doesn't. I might I might do this legitimate. Except they're criminals, and criminals don't keep open contact. Yeah, they don't use... Even even now in the cell phone age, people use burner phones. They just use a cell phone and they just toss it to the side after they're done. Yeah. That'd be so, interesting to see, like, Le Samurai in modern day. Uh, was it, that was that French film where, uh... Yeah, where the guy was a hitman. Oh, yeah. But it go, went into, like, really detail about how he went through his hit shit. Yeah, that... that that's interesting. I, I would actually and like to both, see a remake of that. They're both crime movies. That one more from the criminal side. This one more from the invest from the I, from both sides. From, yeah. So the investigators being the more competent side. Shep, Shep has basically got the vocabulary and personality of uh, of Big Macintosh from My Little Pony. Okay, go back. The Shep Shep Chef? No Shep 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 S H E P. I kept hearing it as Chef. Chef, 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 chef Rockfoot. Yeah, Chef Rockfoot, the mechanic. <laughs> chef Rockfoot. So that chef. Hello, th- children. They called him that because he cooked meth. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. No, Na- Native American mechanic dude who is the contact for these two criminals. Yeah. And, and, well, he's only got contact for one. He can't vouch for the other one. I think he says, I "Can't vouch for this." Uh, he's the big blonde guy, right? Yeah. Th- is his contact? I think so. Steve Buscemi is like, I can't vouch for him. I don't trust that guy. So, he basically shows up. I guess the whole purpose of the scene is to establish that that's how he got in contact with these criminals. But he doesn't talk, and he, he just gets asked direct questions. He's know, like, nope. No wonder he and the other guy get along. <laughs> yup. <laughs> nope. <laughs> anyway. He's kind of he's kind of like Chad, too, in some ways. Con- kind of. So, yeah. Chef- I get it, because he's a minority. No. So, uh, so he basically... Tries to get a hold of the criminals. Shep's like, I don't have any other number, and he leaves. That's the thing about Lundergaard this entire movie. He's a very cowardly personality. Yeah, nothing ever really works out for He's him. He's a halfway he crook. Yeah, he doesn't know how to deal with things when things go wrong. Very yeah, well. and so he's like, I can't get another number. He's like, rather than say, go to the cops and be like, I fucked up, please protect my wife. He's like, well, I'll put this off. I'm sure things will work out. I just gotta stay on top of this. <laughs> So, uh, so then we go back to the wife, or no, 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 okay, before that, we actually see him talk about the deal, and the guys are yeah, like... Yeah, they're in the office with the father-in-law, right? And the pro- and the only reason, the only reason this doesn't, like, he, do- he doesn't get the money was because he's, like, he's offered less than he thought he would? Well, he was, th- he was thinking, like, they would loan him mo- the money, and then he could buy this property and he'd just pay back the loan and he'd get all the profits from the new place and they're like this is an investment why why you think we're gonna put the money in and you're gonna get all the money no but they were they were offering him 10 percent, which was actually pretty nice i would have i would have gone for it but then again i don't have any sketchy loans i need to repay on the slide so yeah yeah and they basically they offer look it's 10 percent or nothing and then he He's all sulking. He gets home, 
And he continues sulking. There's a lot of sulking he does yeah. in the movie. But by the time he gets home, his wife's already gone. Oh, yeah, they did kidnap the wife. Yeah, they, there was it, a whole kidnapping scene. There was a kidnapping scene where... Uh, where she's just staring at this dude with a crowbar and a ski mask looking in her window, and she's not doing anything. Okay, just let's wait this out. Let's, let's see, see how, how this pans out. out. Spoiler alert, it doesn't pan out he well. He smashes the window and it comes in. The she two immediately come becomes hysterical. I, yeah, realistically so. Yeah, and she ends up knocking herself out on the stairs. Yeah, I, and at this point of the movie, you made the joke that she was dead, and I thought, hey, I'd believe it. That'd be a twist. Yeah. That, that would be a way for uh, friggin' Lunderman's sh- luck to go even further okay, south. Okay, by the way, Lunderman uh, we Lunderman? forgot. In the beginning of the movie, it says, the following events are true. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you now, because I didn't tell you, they're not true. Okay. This whole story was is fiction. Okay. Do you believe it, or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could believe it to be true. I believe there's a guy like, uh, okay, Lumberg. I don't remember his name, so he's Lundergard. Lumberg. Lundergard out there. Yeah. Because L- uh, realistically... That's how, like, a real-life crime would go down. Yeah. Shit would fall apart. Oh. <laughs> it steadily gets worse and worse for me. You feel less and less bad because you because you think you brought this on yourself. What was it after? They, they kidnap her. They kidnap her. They, her. I they, don't remember much after that. Okay. They kidnap her. And then it's just mostly investigation for a while, Oh, right? well, the, the, what sets off the investigation... Oh, right, okay, Because yeah. it, M- Macy's plan, Lundergaard's plan... Was to keep this whole kidnapping thing on the down low, so the cops wouldn't get involved. And because the, he still needs the ransom now that the whole business deal fell through, so well, yeah. Or he he might have just taken the ten percent. He's like, all right, guys, sure, and then just just like that's not enough money. I need more money. So they're kidnapping Lunder Lunderman's Lunder Lunderguard's wife. Lunderguard's wife. I'll get it eventually. Yeah, his wife, and they're gonna hold him for ransom to the rich father-in-law. Now, before they get to their safe house, though, they pass through Brainerd. And, uh, and a cop stops them because they've still got dealer plates. Yeah. By the way, this wasn't a legitimate purchase of the car. Lundergaard just basically took a car out of his, out of this lot and gave it to them. Yeah. Like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so. You gotta spend money to make money, Lunderberg. Shit. <laughs> so, uh, so they get stopped by a cop. Uh, Bushimi tries to bribe him with 50 bucks. That the most can he was a Mountie. Let's be honest. Yeah, he was a he was a Mountie. That a was pretty Canadian cop. Taking a step out of the vehicle, sir. <laughs> he was the cop from Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh, you say you know Bulma briefs, eh? <laughs> what uh, what what's someone like you got to do with her, eh? We based Capsule Corp out of Brainerd. We did. So so Peter Stormare. Fake John Travolta is Gets basically tired not, of this shit. And it just shoots him. Yeah, it just grabs the cop and shoots Gun him. Shots in, the head. in this movie are really wimpy. It's not like bang, it's just like a pop. And then he just kind of splurted out. And yeah, gets, and, and then. And uh, sh- well, yeah, shitty Jules give it eh, a face. Yeah, he's surprised. He looked like. He either Your looked like he was like disgusted. It looked like he was either disgusted or he had the strangest boner. <laughs> yeah, I did make that joke. <laughs> yep, you did. Um, and then some kid, they, they're taking care of the body. Yeah, some he's, he's dragging him. car comes up. And then another car with, like, two teens come up look horrified. It's and just then... a fat kid who looks like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Poor bastard. One of them so... was credited with the Prince symbol for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so Shitty, Shitty Travolta turns around and chases these guys down as and witnesses. So, but it's an icy road and the, uh, the witnesses Because they're, they're teen drivers. Yeah. One tries to... So one has the dilemma. I can either stay here and die via gunshot, or I could go run off into the wilderness and die via hypothermia. Tries running. Doesn't get far. Yeah, he, he died. It was probably a better death awaiting him. He freezes to death. That's not pleasant at all. Well, he got shot in, like, the stomach, so he's still probably... He's oh, gonna bleed God. out while freezing. <laughs> Your guts are gonna fill up with shit. You can't walk if that's all you get. And then there's the, the like, there's the girl in the car that yeah. he just sees and shoots. Yeah, he shoots. So that's three people dead. Yeah, he, that's a triple homicide, but based off this kidnapping. And can we be honest? This is all uh, this is all Lundergaard's fault. Yeah, the whole movie is Lundergaard's. Yeah, the fault. whole Lund- the whole movie is hit as a guy basically too proud to try to beg for money from his father-in-law yeah, he or did. his wife. He could have asked legitimately either of the two. He was just so convinced that they would turn him down that he had to felt he had to resort to these methods. I mean... He didn't even try You asking. don't even know what the loan was for. Maybe it was like... 
He well, he collected loan sharks because he was having a bad day at the shop. Maybe, maybe I mean, he has a gambling problem. Maybe he's just, just a compulsive thief. Maybe I don't know. So we cut to a a really nice place. There, uh, a police police officer. Uh, what's her name? Martha. Margie. Margie. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Margie's woken up. She's this uh, woman who's six months pregnant. Pregnant. I think Some, something along that. She's married. They actually hit her. Her and uh, and her husband Gunderson, they get along. They get all. They're they're a sweet couple. Yeah, I like them. She has to get up for work like early in the in the a.m. hours, and he's like, "No, no, I'll get up with you. Come I'll on, make you of, some eggs. What kind of eggs do you want? <laughs> you don't have to get up. No, no I'm making start, eggs. He even jump starts her car when yeah. it's having problems. Yeah, and she's she's this pregnant cop, and you were worried that, that she was gonna die. Well, I thought uh, you you mentioned she was pregnant, and I'm like, oh, okay, so that means that the baby gonna die as well that, that's what you're telling me no no i was putting you on edge i'm sorry no nah, it's fine so uh so that's just the uh, the cop characters introduced the, yeah the cop she, characters she's like the, isn't she the chief of police or is she just uh, a cop she's, she's a cop i okay. think brainerd's not large enough to have like a regular chief of police and she goes to investigate the crime scene and she's she and and her watson are, yeah. are out here and they're basically they have the most minnesotan accents out of the entire cast yeah. so far she, she's got her, her male cop buddy with her and he's just he's standing around and holding coffee they're That's holding his coffee look at a bunch of corpses. cup holder <laughs> they're they're holding coffee they're drinking coffee they're looking at a couple of cops and they're looking at a couple of dead bodies and they're like yup seems like we got a murder here we do that's a real shame isn't it yeah and she's she's describing all these things she's telling him about okay so it went down like this eh and he's like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yep. That makes sense, eh? Sounds good. I, I'm putting way too many A's. It's it's Minnesotan, not Canadian. Yeah. Still. American can Canada. Yeah, Minnesota. Minnesota's American. That I, we, I said that at the start of the movie, is that my going into the movie, my assumption was that it was going to be quirky. It wasn't! <laughs> it was pretty quirky, because was, otherwise, why else would they set it in Minnesota? It's, it's the, the that, comedy. That's what they wanted to, people to think. That was the draw of the I movie. I was like saying, that, if this was set in California, this would be a whole different movie. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the accents are what keep it lighthearted. Yeah, I think that was the point. By the way, I I, I didn't mention this during the movie, but did you know they made a, a television series based off of this movie? I did not. Yeah, the thing is, it's an anthology series. The first season takes place in like a t 2006. Uh, it's it's not the same plot of the movie. It's a different kind of plot with the similar themes. Yeah. And then second season takes place in the 70s, and they're setting the third season in modern day. Mm. So they already did Fargo and the crime in the 90s, and now... Okay. Yeah. I've seen the first episode. It's pretty good. Okay. It's backed by the same people, at No, least. I, I, was, I was saying that that was... When the theater... When the trailers for this movie came out, that had to be the thing that everyone was thinking. Why Minnesota? Why Minnesota? <laughs> well... Yeah, the only the, this movie would only work in Minnesota. I yeah. feel. Yeah. Anyway, the, the or or potentially Canada. If the Canadians were to do a remake of this, I'd buy that too. Yeah. The the crime investigation. The the cup holder guy just standing there listening the, to her the, explain the Watson, everything. The Watson. The Watson thing. Well, yeah, like, I was getting to that. Is because he, he's the Watson because it's just this lady is deducing everything, explaining everything to him, and then they get in the car and he has his own theory. Right? Is that he's what like that is? he's like yeah the the car it was marked down like this and. It begins with DLR, and the woman's like, "You're a fucking idiot, aren't you?" <laughs> You're going a little, a little bit Irish there. Sorry, it's the Celtic but, music in the beginning. It's throwing yeah. me off. And she's like, I, "I, I, don't, I don't think I agree. I don't think I agree with your, with your, with your, your uh, in investigative work there." I think it was dealer plates. I don't know why I think that, but it. Wow, well, because that DLR is that's how dealer plates start. Yeah. So. He was like, oh, I get it. So, yeah, what Watson is not the one who d does the good deducing. No, it's uh, Sherlock actually does her job in this. In Margie this Holmes. Uh, so, the next part in the movie, we see we see Steve Buscemi laughing at this hysterical woman running around barefoot in the snow. Yeah. Because why not? So, they're at, the, they're at their hideaway cabin with the ransom wife. Yeah. Uh, they don't really do much throughout the rest of the movie. I mean... They kind of just... They kind of just kinda hold out. out. Yeah. So, meanwhile, Lundegaard, once he finds out his wife was kidnapped, he basically preps his story about what he's going to tell the father-in-law. Yeah, and he, he calls him, and they He meets up, up with, uh, with his father-in-law and this and third person, the accountant, survives the movie. Actually, also not a dick character. Yeah. 
He, he's the he's the dude who like, yeah. But basically, he says no cops, and the, and then the the father all is like, of course they say that they're criminals. I'm dealing with this shit. Can we haggle them down? Can we get down to five hundred thousand, maybe? <laughs> and the accountant actually agrees with the su- with the with son. With the son, the only time he agrees, like, yeah, you're. I don't know. This is your daughter, man. You really want to try to haggle this? <laughs> he must not like. Either he must not like her, or or he just doesn't want to risk a million dollars. Well, you don't get rich by spending money, son. <laughs> So yeah, it's his deal. Um, fuck yeah! After it's, this, the rest of the movie gets chaotic. It's a lot of because we're now following three plot lines. It's mostly just the the guys just sit around, and it's mostly just investigation and Lunder. It's Lunder, basically a crime movie. Yeah, and Lunder shitting himself. Lundergaard is having to pretend that everything's normal. He tells his son, his crying son. This is where we see the white snake poster and the accordion. <laughs> And then the poster saying well, actually, accordion, we're thinking, man. Is that an accordion or is it just a little piano? No, but then we saw the poster. Yeah, the door, the door like, closes and it's an accordion it's poster. An, it's so a fucking accordion poster. Just in case you had any doubts. Tells his son, if anybody asks... Oh, Irish. If anybody asks... Is that better? I right, well, whatever. whatever. If anybody asks... Uh, tell them... It, tell them she's in Florida. Yeah. Because <laughs> that actually seems plausible, because a Minnesotan would want to go to a place where it's always sunny and warm. Yeah, she did. Now, Lunder... The one smart thing was to establish a color, an alibi for his wife that sounded plausible. Lunder's story until the end of the movie, for the most part, is just him occasionally getting visits by Margie. He gets two visits from Margie. Well, yeah, he gets the first visit. He, he goes to speak midget. with... He gets he goes he actually goes to speak with Shep Proudfoot another time, but she's our but he already sees her him with uh with uh Margie. Oh yeah, Margie first visited Shep. Shep, children. Shep. He, he visited, she goes to she goes American to she goes to she takes a trip to Minnesota when it realizes there's not enough evidence here to determine what's going on. She talked to two uh two prostitutes that these two people fucked, but uh but she wasn't able to get anything, so she's like. Other than that, he was uncircumcised. That was the extent of. Her. There was like a there was like a scene where she, where she gets lunch from. Uh, we get some dialogue between her her husband and a shitty and the buffet. Watson and. <laughs> oh, there's like a lot of yas in that scene. Yeah. He's okay. talking about how he's gonna paint like a, a painting for the three cent stamp. Yeah. Which is a pretty specific goal. Yeah. Um. Or a stamp, a stamp. Yeah. yeah, it's like a contest, I think. Yeah, he, he, he his hobbies are. He's just a guy who likes fishing and painting. He's a very he's, chill dude. Oh yeah, he he he's like he's simple, but in a good way. Yeah, he has a, he has simple pleasures in life. He's ha- ha- he's content. So it's just investigative for the most part. Is there the is chunk, middle chunk of the movie? There is a side plot about uh, about Margie talking with with this Japanese Minnesotan. That was kind of like out of the, out of nowhere. I just kind of that was on. weird. Just just this. Uh, I will say the fact that he managed to pull a Korean dude who was neither Japanese nor Minnesotan managed to pull off an accent that was both Japanese and Minnesotan was pretty impressive. That he that he was a great actor, and I don't know I don't know his name, but you you will go down in the Ford Seat Studios Hall of Fame as. One of the most specific accents in uh, in history. Though when he started, he did start to break down, and he kind of broke into just regular Japanese. He lost the Minnesota. See, he was a uh, he was trying. He was showing up. Had this dinner date with Margie. He was basically trying to get with her. Despite he knew she was married, didn't he? He knew he, she was pregnant for God's sake. Yeah, and he was like making up all this shit. He's like, I work in Honeywell. I'm I was married to this woman, but she died of leukemia. He, Fucking! And you just let find out later that she he was never married to her. He was he stalking her, he and he lives with his parents. He's going through some shit. So basically, he's just a normal Hikikomori from Japan. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I actually, I felt more sorry for him than I did for uh, for Lundegaard. Yeah, he's at least he didn't kill anybody. He was a pretty pathetic dude through no fault of his own that we saw. Yeah, so I'm sure he has his own movie that maybe he was a spinoff character. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. Maybe Fargo season three will will talk will tell more about his story. Yeah, sure. Um, not really relevant to the main plot though. The main no. plot for the well, middle she, chunk that of inspires movie. her to check out Lundegaard the second time because the first time she comes, she asks him, "Hey, hey, you wouldn't happen to know of any cars stolen from your lot?" And he's and he's like, "Nope, can't say that I do." And she's like, "Okay, okay." okay. <laughs> 
that was pretty basic. But then she's like, she reflects on it, and, he's, and she's like, this dude's full of shit. So she goes back. Yeah, he was obviously very nervous. He's he's nervous, evasive. At, at certain at some point, before and there are that, other people giving him shit too. There's the guy on the phone asking for, hey, there's the what are these serial numbers for these cars that are unaccounted for that you say you sold? And he's so he's being evasive about the whole thing. He's just trying to rip money from all these different sources, and they're <laughs> all catching him. Everyone. <laughs> the worst criminal yeah <laughs> just hitting me he's got how so much... many crimes going on at once and all of them are failing at the same time <laughs> that's the whole movie <laughs> the dude just he just needed to ask for money from his father-in-law and he could be one kind of asshole but now he's this whole different kind of asshole yeah and so margie investigates him she knows he's at, she gets the feeling at some she's point full be- of shit. at some point before this though the kidnappers Tell tell Lundegaard, we killed people. We're going to have to take the whole thing. And Lundegaard's not really... Uh, He's not having a good day. No, he, he, I think Lundegaard at this point, his plan was like, okay, they're asking for the whole 80000 Fine, sure. Whatever. I'll just give them the 80000 I'll take the rest of the money for myself and no one will be the wiser. And yeah, they call him and tell him this. That uh, basically... We need the entire money, and even then, Lundergaard, That's not really throwing Lundergaard for a loop. It's just more surprising to hear that that he that they murdered three people. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I, he like, seemed pretty upset about the money, though. Seemed pretty upset about the money. Not as upset about the murders. He was even kind of surprised when the cop came over. Was like, wait, Brainerd? You never saw Run the Wall Run, did you? I didn't know. I gotta watch that. that. That's also a movie about being in shit with money and a lot of crazy stuff happening. That was that I, like I three separate like, stories? It was three different continuities. Yeah, three versions of the of the same I'll, events. I'll have to watch it. Um, I think you'd like it, but I probably okay. would. The, um, Fargo. So Fargo. So uh, at some point, they actually do have the exchange. This is before the second interview, and uh, with uh, with Margie, he go. He finally gets a time to meet. But at this point, the 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 father-in-law is like, "No, fuck this! I'm doing this myself. You don't get any say." I don't care what what they said. I'm going. I'm going to be the one to give them the money, and I'm going to get my daughter. This dude goes from zero to badass. He even takes a gun. Yeah, there's, was it? There's a little more investigation. I think I don't remember what happens exactly. There's some but... minor minor deeds. She she starts to pick it up. There's like. Other cops are interviewing locals. Uh, there, there's a scene him. at the station where the guy, where the the Watson guy walks in, and sudden I realize he looks like a lot like Don Knotts, and that's the same <laughs> role he plays. Oh yeah. Well, gee, Andy, what are you gonna do about this triple homicide case? <laughs> but it's then the, the the uh, actual trade off happens. So the trade off happens. The old man goes up. He's armed with both with a suitcase and a revolver. Well, you don't know he has the revolver. He's just no. He, I saw the revolver when he was driving. I saw him oh, okay. load it up. Okay, so I didn't can't... see that part. He's in a really thick jacket. He's got a revolver and a suitcase. And, and Steve Buscemi immediately looks and goes, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> and they argue. He's like, "I I need proof of life. Let me see my daughter." And meanwhile, Steve. Let Buscemi's... me see the money. Let me see the money. Let me see the daughter. Let me see the money. And at certain points, Steve Buscemi's like, fuck this, and shoots him. Yeah. Because he hates negotiating. Yeah, he just shoots the guy. But old, old man is not going to go down easy. No, he, he then takes a, his revolver, shoots him in the face. Yeah, like tears half, it tears oh, through yeah. Steve Buscemi's cheek. <laughs> he nurses that with, uh, with, like, paper towels for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the old man gets... The whole setting. yeah, he gets full of bullets. Yeah, bullet bullet filled. The, and and then, sh- shitty Jules takes the money. She, he takes the entire money, all eighty thousand. And Macy was following him, trying to like I don't know. I think he was gonna kill his father in law and just take the rest of the money. Oh, Lunderberg. I Lund Lunder. I don't even Lunder. remember. Lumberg. Yeah, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Well, I said Lunderguard. I said Lunder. Yeah, Lunderguard. And, I'll, I'll uh, just remember, like, Under Armour or Under Guard. It's like Lunderguard. <laughs> so he arrives, and, uh... <laughs> that's the, that's and he the arrives sh- too late. That's the... Sh- Lunderguard is, bo- is the shittiest uh, criminal in the world, and it also sounds like the name of, like, the shittiest security company in the world. Lunderguard. <laughs> German security company. 
All right, so the trade-off happens. The father-in-law dies. Steve the, Buscemi gets shot and, and runs off with the money. Yeah, and Macy comes just a little bit too late. Yeah, and, he, he, and another guy... He lost the money. He he lost his father-in-law. He's got a bunch of debts. This is his lowest point in the movie. And he go, while he's going out, he sees that the guy manning like the parking lot died, too. Didn't yeah, he, he, he died. It, it, he's just like, oh, jeez. That's the first death that he actually sees firsthand. Now it's on his conscience. Yeah. Well, no, he saw the father-in-law. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what he did? One. He cleaned up after them. He opened his trunk, and that's the last we see of him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that happens. The, the shitty, shitty Jules goes back to the, the cabin with uh, with shitty John Travolta. Meanwhile, uh, Lundergaard is uh, is just going through his day. Like, nothing's going on. Things will all work out. Nothing's gonna be. Nothing's gonna ruin this smile. Then the cop walks in. Yeah. And she basically pressures him like, I I'm tired of your bullshit. Tell she knows me what's up. She finally drops her smile for like the first time in the movie. It goes all full on Unohana. Yeah. And uh, nice cop is gone and. He, and he basically says, oh, fuck it, I'll do a lot count, wait here. And he flees the fucking... He just drives right off. <laughs> and she's like, motherfucker! <laughs> he grabs the phone Jim and calls pulled the back fast off. one on me, he did. Yeah. So they're, uh, they're off... Suddenly the whole state is searching for, A, this uh, Lunder guy. And, <laughs> and B, so a couple of criminals. Yeah, like, the homicide dudes. Yeah. And the, uh, they're back at the cabin. Yeah, they're back at the cabin. The he, wife is still knocked he out. He walks in, blood on his face with a paper towel, and basically, before this, he, he takes 80000 from the from the briefcase and then buries the rest in snow. Was it then? Yeah, he, okay. it was before oh, that, he comes back right, to the that cabin. Was when, uh, that was when I made the... Oh, this is the Shawshank Redemption prequel. <laughs> when you get out of here, I want you to go just south of the Canadian border. How the fuck would Morgan Freeman know about them? What do you think? Hey, Puffs! I stole some money! That's nice. He just, I, I don't know, he just, he knew the guy, they were prison buddies. They were, well, okay, no one would know about the money because of what happens later in the movie. Yeah. So he, so Steve Buscemi comes back. and Covered in blood, still covered got in paper blood. towels on the side of his face. You should see the other guy. <laughs> and uh, and basically gives him the money, he's like, I'll, I'll take the car, you take the truck, and then... Shitty <laughs> John Travolta is like, we split the car. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work that way. How, how do we split a car? That's stupid. And he basically says, I either pay you for the car or you pay me for the car. <laughs> okay. Well, Buscemi's not 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 happy with that. He, he, he got like, shot. He, he so think he's paid his due. He made, he shows him the gun and then walks off and then fucking John Travolta comes out with an axe and kills him. Well, because a gun would be too expected. I mean, we, we played Hotline Miami. Yeah. Melee weapons are far more effective. <laughs> Indeed. The wife, by the way, is still unconscious on the floor. Uh, no, she's dead at this point. Oh, she's yeah, dead. Yeah, he, he killed her. Oh, Because okay. he was making I, too much noise. I was not aware. I didn't pick that up. No, she's, she's dead. Okay, I, I was wondering why Buscemi did not actually take the wife to the trade-off. He had no intention of actually... No, they're criminals! Yeah. M May you know something, Macy? It would have been better if uh, if Lundergaard does this shit himself. It, but the reason why he didn't is because he's too cowardly. Yeah. This whole thing would have worked out so much better if he just did everything personally. Yeah. Then it would have actually been a crime worthy of law and order. So, the, the, the Mountie's dead. The two teenagers are dead. A couple, the wife's of like, dead. a couple of station attendants are dead. The wife's dead, and now Steve Buscemi is and dead. And, no, the, also the gra the father-in-law is dead. Oh, and the father-in-law, so, too. So. so we got this body count on par with a slasher flick, and it's all and it's all because of him. And the only the only guy left, the, the main killer of the movie is Germany. Yes. So, at this point, uh, the, the final act of this movie happens by sheer chance. Yeah, it's just the, the whole cop, the whole state cops are looking for these guys, and Margie happens upon the, going around, going around old Moose Lake. <laughs> Moose Lake, of hey. course, because of course it's called fucking Moose Lake. Don't you know. And then she spots the car. Yes, at this by point, random chance. At, certain, at some point, Steve Buscemi changed out, like, the dealer plates for the actual plates, but at that point, you know the fucking car is a certain model, and fuck yeah. it, might as well just check it out. Now, he stole someone's license. Plate. So she informs uh, the guy, the guy tells her, oh, we'll send backup, we will. She goes up looking for, uh, for shitty John Travolta. And finds him stuffing Steve Buscemi in the wood chipper. 
It's just his leg sticking out, and she's just she's looking with her gun, trying to kind of be sure what's going on. And, and she holds it up, and then she's like, "Police!" And it takes her a couple of attempts, and then finally, when he turns around, she's like, "Police!" And points to the patch on her head. can't hear her over the wood chipper. Yeah, at that point, John Travolta, sh- 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 shitty John Travolta, tries to run off. It's either to I mean, face it's, death by, again, to face death by gunpoint, or death by hypothermia. And he gets shot. Yeah. In, in the back, like the back of the knee. Yeah, well, it's still karmatic in a way. Yeah. No, I, I, I made the joke when he was doing the woodchipper thing that, oh, no, I'm, I'm just slaughtering my cow, eh? I, I, <laughs> I, I just got a wood chipper. It's the redneck way. Yeah, I mean, meat grinders are expensive, eh? Yeah, make some tacos out of this meat. <laughs> and she, she had the look on her face like... Are she you consi- fucking serious? She had a look on her face to me that looked like she was considering if she could still save the guy. <laughs> Can I pull him out? N- nah, I, I, I can't resuscitate a leg. Yeah. So she captures him. She's basically like he she did. scolds him on the way. She in doesn't the actually car. know how much money is like missing, so she she only sees the forty thousand and is like, "You did all this for what? Just a little bit of money? Look at what a nice day it is." <laughs> Uh, well, she, before that, she did, there's more to life than money. Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you know? Don't you know that? <laughs> That's when we dropped it. That was it. the one. They finally dropped it. Yep. And it was... And, and, he's and, saying nothing throughout this. And she's less, like, angry and more just talking to him. Like, man, she's a disappointed more, Don't you know? <laughs> she's talking to him like a you're, disappointed... You're, you're in Minnesota. People love to talk. I'm not Minnesotan. I'm from Berlin. Oh, that's too bad, don't you know? <laughs> But yeah, she does. Dro- she drops the Grave of the Fireflies line. Is that what? Hold on, let's recount in Grave of the Fireflies. In Grave of the Fireflies, the context was different because he said that to yeah, a boy. I, I, I know, up. I know. But let's let's still recall. They're, the whole movie is about some kids going through the aftermath of Hiroshima. Yes, their mother's dead. They've got a, sh- a shitty aunt that's adopting them, and they decide to go off like idiots and live on their own. His sister dies, and he goes to cremate her. And the guy who does the cremation service looks at him and says. At least it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Fuck you, guy. My family is dead. And she drops the same line. She she tells well, she tells Ger- Ger- like Germany. Oh, at least it, it's a beautiful day. Eh? Well, she's it's more like she's telling that to yeah, herself. Yeah, it is. It, it's like, it's I'm not gonna let shitty things happen all the time. I don't know why they happen. I'm not gonna let this bother me. Yeah. Because I've got I'm I've got, I'm expecting a kid. I've got a loving husband. My job doesn't completely suck because I'm a small town cop. I have to. I worry mo- mainly about meth dealers than fucking. Uh, she even says that to Shep Proudfoot when she's talking to him. Oh, we forgot about that. So uh, there's this one scene which I really like. She's interviewing Shep, Shep Proudfoot. And basically says, you've had some trouble with nar- nar- the narcotics you have. <laughs> and after after he got pinched, he goes to where Steve Buscemi's staying and basically beats the shit out of him. That was a very, that was a very, uh, what's the Pulp Fiction director? Tar- that was a very uh, Tarantino-ish scene. Yeah, <laughs> just... Shep just goes in and beats the shit out of, uh... Out of fucking... Out of Buscemi, who's having like, sex in Shep's apartment, right? Yeah, with a prostitute. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yo, and man, what the fuck? Go smoke a fucking peace pipe. <laughs> Was that racist, do you think? It kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously gets the just shit beat out of him, but that's not... He still has more shit beating in him, so the neighbor shows up to try to quell things, and, and he then gets the shit it, out of him, too. <laughs> the prostitute runs off, he actually kicks her in the back. He just goes full-on, heart-like... He goes into something. berserker mode. And that's... That's the last time we see him. Yeah, we him don't beat the shit out of Steve Buscemi. We don't know if he got charged as accomplice or accomplice or what happened. Probably just let him go because yeah. all, all he did was refer a guy to him. Yeah. So into the movie. They, uh, so the, the are, Germany gets caught. He gets arrested. They take him, and it's a and it's a reprisal of the opening scene of yes, the movie. Yes. Yes. And then uh, then in north somewhere in North Dakota, they say uh, may. It, Lundergaard, using the pseudonym Anderson, that, that caught me kind of off guard, Yeah, gets caught by two separate cops. He's trying to go out the window. They throw him down to the bed. He's just throwing cr- a tipper. Screaming and crying. <laughs> just the most pathetic dude. The wimpiest dude. I feel more bad for the kid. This just yeah. happened. That's his father. He's an orphan now. He's that's going to be the Minnesotan Batman. <laughs> the Minnesotan Batman. His mother died and his father was an idiot. His father was probably impotent too. 
Yeah. Well, actually, no, because the wife seemed happy with him, so maybe he only had that going for him. If the wife seemed happy with him, she was probably just dumb as he was. <laughs> Two idiots. They're perfect for each other. <sighs> so so she yeah, gets he gets caught. caught. Uh, then the, the heroes of the movie... Uh, the guy, the painting wins a three cent stamp. It's not the best stamp, but he gets, you know, he gets yeah, a stamp. But they're it, it, they're both content. She's like two more months, and, and they're like, oh, well, at least we have each other. We, everything's gonna turn out just fine. And the movie ends. Yeah, I solved. Yeah, a, I solved a quintuple homicide. Don't you know? <laughs> quintuple. It, oh man, it was more than that by the end of it. It was like seven people. Oh, seven people seven. died because an idiot was just. That's, I guess that's why, I'm not going to say whether or not we recommend a movie, because it pe- turns out people watching, if people watch, I'm of the opinion if people watch this, they already know what, they're just asking, they're just thinking about what we're going to say about a movie, and not recommendations. Seven people died. I'm just going to ask, why Why was this movie so successful? Seven. Or why it wasn't successful in time to we watch a movie where it didn't do well commercially. What's why? in the box, Lunderbird? <laughs> I was trying to fit that seven, seven joke in for a while, but you're oh, talking. Man. Okay, what? So yeah, I I I don't know. I think it's well, quirky. The, it's people quir- like Minnesotan accents. I think that's the reason. I also think it's because this movie lost. It was nominated for an Oscar and lost out to yeah. the English Patient. Well, to be yeah, I was gonna say How's Moving Castle lost an Oscar too, and that was a great movie. Yeah, the Oscars aren't really. An indicator, Satoshi? a real indicator of long-term quality. I don't think any Satoshi Kones films ever won Oscars. They already, I don't think any of them were even nominated. I doubt it. But yeah, um, this movie this movie was nominated for an Oscar. I don't remember which one, but it lost out to The English Patient. Yeah. What which was his, I, what was I his think rank in that top 100? You're going off a of top 100 American film institute. I was. I'm not going to do that because the AFI are... I don't trust their opinion compared to... Hold on. Uh... 100 fil- years, 100 movies. Uh, we'll edit this out. All right, so, we don't have to. So what did you... You said you thought this movie was, was worse than Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, but you're biased. I didn't, well, I mean, I don't didn't enjoy it as much, I would say. I yeah. wouldn't... I can't necessarily say better or worse, because I haven't taken the time aside to analyze anything, but it was... You know, it was an okay... It was realistic. It was well acted. Yeah, it was... Uh, the acting was pretty good. It, it, it felt almost, like a, could, it could take place in the real world. Yeah, it, it built itself as a true story, and I actually thought it was a true story for the for the longest time. I was like, I think I was like sixteen when I first watched this. Yeah, and I, I enjoyed it too. Was it before or after you'd seen Pulp Fiction for the first time? I, I think it was. Was it before? I think yeah, because because realistically, oh, the, du- I I saw that entry on the list and I thought it was Cuck Soup. <laughs> Duck Soup. That's a Marx Brothers film. Yeah, in number 84 okay. on this. So it's the top 84 top 100. So it was the best movie in the year 1996 is I guess what they're saying. Yeah. 1991 was Silence. So yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, we, we pretty much just went through a summary of the movie. That was the whole thing. We gave our opinions of it. But uh, who do you think was the best actor in the movie? Uh, Probably the Japanese dude. <laughs> the, the Korean dude playing a Japanese Minnesotan. I don't like to say it. Honestly, it was probably Lunder. Lunder, he did a really good job as an actor portraying all the nervousness, all the all the subtle things, and a, just what a bullshit character Lunder was. I'm. What, what else was he? Because that 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 actor, he did a really good job because that's that's kind of what he's good. At. He's good at playing those kinds of characters. Now, what saying that though? Realize that for me, I don't credit actors very highly in the making of a movie. I don't consider them the heart of the movie at all. They don't make yeah. a movie for me. It's all about the writing. Yeah, act, a good act, a good actor portrays the name act you don't necessarily you shouldn't necessarily go see a movie just because a name actor is in it in my opinion because they might be miscast. Yeah. Uh Okay. So it, you're looking up the guy now. Yeah, I'm looking up the guy William right Macy. now. Uh, what was he in? I'm trying to think. Being human? 93B. You recognized him from, you said Blacklist, didn't it? No, oh, this, no is, this is uh, something else. Andersonville? Yeah. Okay. To evolve for... Do you think that was a reference to Andersonville, him going by Anderson? Oh yeah, he was in Air Force One. Oh. He was he was an army dude. <laughs> okay. Boogie Nights. Psycho. Oh yeah, that's right, I recognize him from Pleasantville. Yeah. That's that movie about, uh, about racial tensions in the 50s. Yeah. And like... It was a deconstruction of the 50s uh, 
Yeah, he was a uh, he was the 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 sitcom husband in Pleasantville. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I that's why I thought he was. A, oh, he's also in Mystery Men as the Shoveler. Mm. This is a fake superhero movie. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Oh, Night of the Headless. No, never mind. You thought it was. That's Night- not the. I thought that was the. Uh, what's it? The Tim Burton version. No, that's a. It says voice of. So that might be. That's a different version. Yeah. Uh. He was in Marmaduke. Wild Hogs, because of course he was. He's one of those actors that was in a bunch of uh, a bunch of really good movies, and then just kind of decided he was going to act in whatever just to get as much money as he could and kind yeah. of squander his reputation. I don't remember, like, as far as the movie production goes, I don't remember any, like, specific shots or scenes or anything that struck me as especially standout, so... The people consider the woodchipper scene the most standout mo- uh, part of the movie. It was it was a drawn out scene. It was a it was a long shot. Yeah, that's the that was the most uh, that was the most iconic at the time. But yeah. uh, I think I think I'm trying to think of what my favorite scene was, and I think it was just the initial uh, investigation scene where they're just casually holding coffee, looking at emergency, and going, "Yep, that happened." <laughs> I think I kind of liked the office scene where he's talking to the two guys first about, okay, we're going to accept your investment. Wait, oh. oh I, I, I'm going to get all the money, right? Are no. you stupid? <laughs> it was basically their reaction. I, I'm, I'm surprised that's your favorite scene because that that's like, I I don't, I didn't know that. Uh, I guess you, with your accountant training, you were I, just I looking at it anyway. That, uh, that was the, that was... Like a moment where you get, we got to see Lunder realize how stupid he really was, <laughs> or at least us realize how stupid he. He thought he was like the smartest person in the room when in actuality he was just a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. The, the father-in-law was pretty decent, decently acted. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it was a very middle of the board movie for me. Yeah. I would, based on this one viewing and without giving it further time to analyze, I'd say five out of ten. Uh, that, I, that's the Zellrog score for now. <laughs> uh, I I still like this movie. I I do. I think I think it may have aged kind of poorly, just because compared to to movies nowadays, it's very very slow and the pacing is a bit. How long was this movie? A minute thirty eight. An hour thirty eight. It didn't feel like an hour thirty. It felt a bit longer than that. I think so. A bit. But I, I think that writing wise, it's still, it's still pretty solid. There weren't any major like plot holes, yeah. as as far as I could see. I mean, I mean, the main character was an idiot, but I don't think he was like an idiot due to miswriting. I think he was an idiot because he was intended to be an idiot. The worst part of the writing, the only thing that I would call. Either bad or nearing the territory of bad is the we talked about earlier the just sheer coincidence of Margie being the one who happens to find the car there. Well, if you're a movie, you get one. You get yeah. one scene of just oh fuck sheer coincidence. Everyone gets one. Everyone gets every movie is allowed one because realistically, well, that doesn't happen very often. It 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 can happen in real life. It can. And he was at, and he was and she was actively searching. For her car. Yeah. So, so it makes sense. It, it, I mean, yeah, it was sheer chance That's that can be kind of lazy. I feel like they did, they might have, they could have wrote themselves in the corner, but, you know. I'm just saying if there was something. It, it didn't rely sense. on that. It didn't rely on that, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could buy it. Um, Any final comments? If you haven't seen it, go see it. Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> also, also, uh, from what I heard, Minnesotans are kind of torn on this movie. Are they? They thought it's, e- it's either a great parody or they're pissed because it... Uh... <laughs> the accents are a little over the top. I don't think that yeah. a lot of actual Minnesotans sound that, you know, you uh, know. Oh, here we don't go. Don't you know. Uh, nom- An Academy Award, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Oh, for Fargo? Yeah. I should, I should like, take a look. So this was 97 Academy Awards. It was... I'm going to do this if a movie... If any movie is, like, nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, f- That's 74. Oh, I should just go back to Fargo. 
Uh, where, where did you didn't click on Fargo. You got to go to. Yeah, I know. I'm you, going back up. Or, 90, okay, you were at it already. Ninety six. Fargo. Is. Let's see. Critical critical well, response. Ninety four percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Violent, quirky, and darkly funny. <laughs> according to some critic. Yeah. Uh, one. It was nominated Academy Award for Best Picture. For director, best supporting actor, best cinematography, and film editing. It won the award for best actress and for writing original screenplay. Oh. Fran- Francis McDormand? Was that, uh... Yeah, that is... Okay, yeah, that cool. Was Margie? No, I, I believe it. That She was... She she had, like, one of the best accents out of that movie. Yeah. Best original screenplay. It won that. But it lost out to best picture to The English Patient. And yeah. if you remember what the English patient is, congratulations, you're a bigger film geek than we are. I have no idea what it is. It sucks. From popular opinion says that it's pretentious, it's long, it's got the technical specifications of a great picture without having the heart of it. Yeah. Uh, they did, they so did a Seinfeld like ep- spectacle. They did a sign. It's, it's spectacle, but it's not Michael Bay spectacle. It's more like... Phantom of the Opera without the cool story. It's basically music. like it's basically like quote real cinema unquote legit cinema. Okay. This is cinema for cinephiles. It's not like that watered down shit that you'd have fun watching. You're not supposed to want, have fun watching this. So Michael Bay stuff. Michael Bay stuff is intended to be people to have fun. It's not intended for critics. I've yeah. come to accept that about Michael Bay. Yeah. Well, that was episode one. Uh, whenever I get him to watch another one of my movies or these movies, we'll do another episode. You owe me some Takahashi. That that's your payment for these movies. This is for the internet. We're, you're still applying that shit. Yes. Fuck. All right. N- until we next. Gotta, we gotta go watch Ranma. We'll we'll see you guys later. <sighs> Fuck you. All right. See you later.